how do you want to fail? Because you are going to fail at some point. How do you want to go down? Well, I want to go down actually having to take sort of the attacking option. I want to go down knowing I've committed to my process. I want to go down knowing actually I've, I've fronted up when the opposition have been, you know, like really trying to get on top of me. I think toughness is about learning how you deal with, how you learn, how you deal with failure. Have you got the right coping skills to manage the emotion that comes with failure? Knowing how you keep perspective on, on, on situations. And the only way really to do that is to expose them to it. You know, for some players, it's about understanding when does that strength turn into that that weakness? And it's almost like a tip, tipping point, isn't it? In, in in that sense of that awareness of when does my strength turn into that 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 I guess an Achilles heel. Um, I'm swearing. I think form is a load of BS. <laughs> I, I, gen, genuinely, because I, and, and 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 I think it's a, it's an excuse a lot of players use. <laughs>
you know, the best athletes kind of, you know, you, there's a lot, lot of phrase in there, you know, pressure is a privilege, fear is a privilege, you know, that comes with comes with being at that at that level. But I think, you know, fear kind of shows up in, in so many different ways, be it, um, you know, learning learning a new skill in a, in a, in a you know, a team context, but actually you don't really want to do that because actually it may mean there's risks of you getting, getting deselected to opening the batting in a T20 international um, having to basically risk risk losing your wicket to actually get the team off to a flyer to actually I'm going to commit to um, bowl into this plan here and actually knowing that well if I don't execute here it could go out the park it, it kind of shows up in so many different ways and I guess it's something that's always present I think what you're always trying to do is trying to help athletes find out their way to commit I think that's the key word is like commit to commit to their skill, accepting that it might not work out, accepting that um, that's just that that's part of the game. Um, you know, we, we, we talked a lot about um, certainly within the um, within the within the women's program is making sure you, you're judging yourself on the right things. You know, and, you know, and, uh, Robbo, um, who was the coach um, at the time, was very, very clear. You know, I'm, I'm going to judge you on these things. I'm not going to judge you on how many runs you score, how many wickets you take, or you know, like the outcome side of things. I'm going to judge you on how you show up, um, and I think that that's probably the most most important thing of of almost like controlling the environment. Really, you 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 kind of bringing yourself to bringing yourself like how how do you want to fail essentially <laughs> in in a, in a nutshell? Because you're gonna you're gonna mess up at times, aren't you? You're gonna get stuff wrong. And it's you know, a great kind of way of reframing the whole situation. How do you want to fail? Because you are going to fail at some point. How do you want to go down? Well, I want to go down actually having to take took the attacking option. I want to go down knowing I've committed to my process. I want to go down knowing actually I've, I've fronted up when the opposition have been, you know, like really trying to get on top of me. Those kind of things. So is it almost using it to your advantage? So when a batsman's about to walk out into the middle, a bowler at the top of their mark, using those emotions, focusing the mind and turning it into a positive? It's, de it's definitely part of it, isn't it? And, you, you know, so we, we had the, um, the World Cup final at Lords. Um, I know a lot of the girls had spoke about this. You know, it's the first ever time you've, you've played at Lords, full house, probably like 90 million people watching this World Cup final because obviously we're playing against India and like the whole of India are tuned in as well. So the TV ratings went through the roof. Now you can either look at that situation and go, do you know what, I'm going to let this squash me or I'm going to use it. I'm going to, use, you know, I'm going to, you know, like really use the energy from the environment and, and see where it takes me. I, th I think that's the best, always the best way. You know, and that, that whole, whole sense of challenge and threat, a lot of that is about your appraisal of the situation. How do you how do you see the situation? You listen to a lot of commentators in many sports, but let's take cricket here. When the when the pressure is on in that crunch moment, they talk about a player having that mental toughness. Can mental toughness be taught, or is it inherent? Definitely be taught. Yeah, definitely be taught. Um, and I think it, 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 it's, it's 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 two sides, isn't it? It's it's in it's in. It's in Herons in the sense of you, you know, from your your environment and how you are brought up. So I think you know, again, look at some of the some of the research around that, around you know, people who've been through you know adversity and appraise the adversity um, positively um, you know, in terms of how they've made made sense, made meaning of that. You know, they, they've become you know quite quite tough tough characters and they've developed the coping skills that have enabled them to deal with future future situations but some people for, for, you know for whatever whatever reason haven't necessarily been had that exposure to those those things at an early earlier age um, and I think as much as anything toughness is a I think toughness is about learning how you deal with how you learn how you deal with failure have you got the right coping skills to manage the emotion that comes with failure knowing how you keep perspective on, on, on situations. And the only way really to do that is to expose them to it. But gently, gently you're trying to help help them become aware of their coping coping resources as they as they go through that and then how they then use that for future future scenarios that that, that, that may come up. But I think it's two sides. Some people are very, very natural at it. Other people they have to they have to learn it. And then in terms of building confidence in an athlete, how do you work with someone who has 
overconfidence. So a lot said about underconfidence, but say mm. if someone's got overconfidence, that's when things they can just whack it out of the park every ball. What discussions would you have in, in sessions? I think, you know, I guess there's a, there's a, there's a couple, of, couple of bits to this. I think one is around, you know, if you take the, you know, that, 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 that sense of like some of the work we, we do with mindful, like around um, like understanding like the, the anatomy of a strength. So you can think conf confidence in a sweet spot. Like, you, you know, you're going to essentially probably take risks. You're going to, um, you know, be comfortable kind of seeing the situation and seizing the opportunity. Um, you know, like, all, all those kind of things that come with confidence. You, you know, new situations come on. You'll you'll have, you'll have a go. Overdone, as you say, you'll see probably the reckless side of things. You'll see the, um, you know, where you probably do, do things probably out of, out of naivety. Um, and I think you know, for some players, it's about understanding when does that strength turn into that that weakness, it? and it's almost like a tip, tipping point, isn't it? In 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 that sense of that awareness of when does my strength turn into that 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 I guess an Achilles heel um, in that sense, and you're trying to build awareness as much as possible through through evidence building. And I, I always think in cricket, the game the game is the greatest teacher. You, know, you can you know and, and experience experiencing situations is the great the greatest teacher. And there's n there's no greater lesson in in that sense than obviously the impact that maybe a decision that you've had has had on maybe the rest of your team um because actually you, you chose a certain certain path and actually it had the, had the opposite effect to what was intended and i think like anything it's not it's not something all of a sudden a flick of a switch and that'll that'll you know i think like anything you're trying to build that awareness so that they can yeah start start to manage that in the future so hopefully when that situation comes up again they can they can manage it differently and if a cricketer is suffering from a lack of confidence, say a batsman's going through a string of low scores, again, you hear a lot in the media, they're saying their mind scrambled, overthinking their technique. In a sentence, is it just lack of confidence at that present time for that player? Yeah, without, without swearing, I think form is a load of BS. <laughs> I, I, gen, genuinely, because I... And, 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 I think it's a, it's an excuse a lot of players use. Um, you know, I'm, I'm in form or I'm out of form. It, it, it's just clarity around your method and what what works for you, um, and and it's knowing what you know what processes you go back to. And a lot a lot of the time when you know form comes about, it's because actually you've not phrased the situation right. You know, so for instance, you may get three low scores back to back, and all of a sudden you go, "I'm out of form. I'm lacking confidence." Well, no, you just had three low scores. <laughs> First game might have been, you know, all of a sudden umpires triggered you and it was a bad decision. Second game, you've got a grubber that's rolled on the floor. You can't do anything about it. The third game, you've just got a good ball. And, you know, you quickly appraise that and you go, wow, I'm lacking confidence. I'm, I'm out of form. Or you could go, well, actually, I've just got three things there that actually have just gone against me. I just need to, you know, protect protect that bubble. of You know, because that's that's the game. The game is, is a game of natural highs and lows. And that's part of the, you know, the, that that acceptance side of things that things won't always work out. You, you have you have to get comfortable with that as a cricketer, um, as 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 much as anything. Um, you know, I think you're always trying to come back to those things that you know work for you. Coming back to your strengths, coming back to your method, not trying to all of a sudden think, well, you know, they do it this way, and then you know, all of a sudden you're chasing silver bullets that don't exist and changing your game, and then you change your method, and then you're going round again in a circle. You always have to review yourself against: Did I do what I set out to do? And if I did that, you know what, I can't do any more than that. And if the outcome resulted in a positive outcome, brilliant. Um, if it didn't, well. Did I do what I sound to do? Well, okay. And then you appraise it properly. And how important is goal setting for a cricketer? Because cricket is a very stats-based game. Obviously, a lot of people say, oh, you want to get X amount of runs in the season, X amount of wickets. But A, how important is goal setting? And B, should you be um, you know, attaining success to numbers? How how would you answer that? Depends on what again. It depends on, um, I guess the ind the individual as much as anything. So again, I, some players who I who I work with, they'll they're, they're very very much focused on right. Well, I need to. I'm 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 going out to actually achieve this many runs this year, and 
and um, that's the thing that, that that drives them um but ultimately ultimately when you when you boil it back down it's coming back to those processes um, and so it's all old school basic psychology isn't it but coming back to those processes around goals that you know that you know work for you so making sure i go through you know my routine what works for me or making sure that i do my diligent preparation um then those those are the you know the found the foundation things of um that, 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 that work on that side i i think you know again if you kind of look at all the all the sort of the the different the different attributes um of cricket so like maybe s and c from 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 that side you know you, you'd probably be looking more around well you know i'm i'm trying to get to a certain a certain number in you know in, in in terms of what i can you know power to weight ratio for instance or you know what i can what i can deadlift because actually that's going to translate to x power in my bowling action but i think in terms of the numbers side of cricket i think it's knowing what works for you for some people it's like you know they set themselves some goals and then all of a sudden before they know it oh god i'm off track i've not you know miles behind on my targets and then all of a sudden the season is wrote off so i, th I think if you're going to set goals, you have to kind of be comfortable with the fact that, well, I may need to adjust them along as I, as I, as 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 I, as I go by. You know, you may have set a, a target for a thousand runs, and all of a sudden, the context is, well, we've got a really wet summer. <laughs> you know, it's going to be very, very difficult to achieve that goal in that context. And then, just to end on, you obviously work at the highest level in the game, but if a, if a clubby, a young clubby is watching this, a young professional trying to make it in the game. They're going out to play on a Saturday. What's the one piece of advice that you give them most? My, uh, I mean, my biggest belief is making sure your training is is replicable to the game. I think, I think if I could, if I could do one thing, that would have a, the, you know the biggest biggest crossover. It'd be it'd be doing things like that. So if you're out, you're out. For instance, train training with a consequence. Um, you know, training with a bit of fatigue training with um, like a, a, a match scenario, training in like realistic conditions as much as, much as possible. I, I think we, you know, the, the game in this country, I, I think has been certainly, you know, you can kind of go around all the, all the, all the club grounds. I think a lot of players are guilty of, you, know, you see, oh, he, he, looks in, he looks in great, Nick, oh, he's a great, he's a great player. Well, the great net, but ultimately the game's about solving problems. Can you solve the problem that's in front of you? And the game is always about solving the problem, the next problem, because the next problem is always different. Uh, I think that's what you're always trying to, you're trying to develop is those problem solving capabilities in, 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 in players. Mike, perfect. Thank you very much for your time today. It's a fascinating subject and I really appreciate your, your time today. So thank you. Thanks, Neil. Thanks for having me. So Neil Cagram, Cricket Last Stories, Mike Rotherham. Thank you.